Hello everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 35. Yes, another week, an up and down week for Manchester United and drawing against AS, I mean AC Milan. And of course that dreadful win against West Ham. It's been, like I said before, it's been an up and down week for Manchester United. But we're back again with a new show, another one. Volume 35, as always, guys. Counting up until we, we'll never stop. And as usual, we've got my boy, uh, Mook, and we've got Jags here as well. Of course, how, what are you saying, uh, Mook? How you been this week? I'm good, you know. I feel great. I actually feel happy that we went back to second after watching the Leicester match yesterday, so... That makes me have a good weekend still. That's good, bro. And Jex, what are you saying, man? How you've been, man? How's the week been for you, bro? Yeah, it's been a good week, bro. Thank you. Um, good win against West Ham. Of course, the performance wasn't great. But um, yeah, good win. And of course, guys, remember, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button. Remember to share because sharing Ivor and Spice is caring, of course. And guys, if you're new to this show, this is a weekly catch-up podcast that we talk about the match that just happened. And of course, the latest and hottest news coming out from Manchester United. And of course, we reflect on the weekend roundup of the Premier League. And we end it up with the match preview against AC Milan and also the FA Cup against Leicester City. Of course, guys, Manchester United beating West Ham 1-0. Yeah, not the best game for you to watch, of course. Like I said before, mm. it's, it, it is a highlight thing. If you ever wanted to watch Manchester United, you better off, off just watching the highlights. Dull game. Manchester United beating West Ham without scoring at all. Winning the game, but without really scoring a goal, you know. And for those of you that was pleased with the results, of course, we all was disappointed with the performance, which is understandable, considering that we was playing West Ham and, and them being in form, you know. We have to take this win. Although I hate the performance, it's all about the W. We move on. Well, hopefully the next game is better. The next Premier League game has always been better, but I doubt it. Reflecting on that game, guys, I'm going to start off with you, Amok. You tell me exactly what you thought of that game, and then we're going to go straight into it. We're going to dissect it deep as well. Nah, like the first thing I can take off from the game was the three point. I'm really excited that we got the three point, which was needed. But like you guys just mentioned, the performance was just dreadful. Like, I know we find it hard against West Ham, which, like, for that's the tradition with United. West Ham been doing numbers not in the past few years, but it shouldn't stop you. I know it's a building process. The club is still going through that building process, but our performance in the building process, they don't match. If the, if the owners are happy about that, I don't think there's any progress in the club at this moment. You cannot be playing football like this. And you see in the second, we are, I think the club itself, it's lucky. I just watched the other game, the Liverpool game. Team he played so well, lost the match. But United played so bad and won the match without even scoring the goal. Like it's a good win, but the, the way we play the setup, the players themselves, I don't know, like, it's really confusing. I just want to know what he does, how he puts his players together, or before the match where he tells these players how we need to play this particular team. What's the trust, the, the strategy? What's your, like, I don't know, as a manager, I want to see some of them. See them books they've got, them paper, them leaflet that go through. I want to see what's on it for Oli. Mm -hmm. I really want to see it. Nothing mm -hmm. much, of course. Yes, we all want to see exactly what's on that paper. <clears throat> Yeah, you give it to the players, they've been flipping it through, and still we don't see good results. Jax, I'm going to throw it straight to you. I'm sure you watched the match, man. You let me know exactly what you thought of that game. Yeah, that first half was a ball. I think I fell asleep once or twice, you know. I drifted off during that first half. Um, but to be fair, West Ham, 
it was a great opportunity for us to extend ourselves away from the, the fifth, which West Ham, of course, they possess. And it was, we did the job. It was a poor performance to watch. Um, I feel like for me, Greenwood did very well. He hit the post twice. He could have scored. He's having that sort of season where he's been in and out of the team. He's almost scoring. He's, he's not having a great season, but I can see all the positives that he's doing. So it was great for me to see Greenwood in that game. But it was, a, it was a lack, lack, another lacklustre performance. West Ham sat back and they, they let us do what we do. Unable to penetrate, you know. We didn't really have a plan A, plan B. Um, but the three points was the most important thing at this stage of the season. That's all we can really, really focus on, to be honest with you. So, yeah, three points. Not too happy with the performance, but you can't complain. Performance-wise, we're going to go straight into that performance because performance-wise, we was horrible. Another game where we failed to really show ourselves in, against an opposition. We, the game against AC Milan, we struggled again to create anything apart from the Diallo moment. This game now with West Ham, we struggled to create anything. When we did, we didn't take our opportunities. But yeah, again, we won the game without scoring. Performance-wise, I'm, I'm going to throw it straight to you again. How do you think we did? Well, both games. Like, you just mentioned a similar match. First half, we, what, did we did, what did we do in the first half? Absolutely nothing, apart from a couple now, of shots. I remember the commentator saying, this is not the a similar that Arsenal gave 5 mil coming away. And I remember that they were saying that in the same competition, though, and we played like that. They own Old Trafford. I don't get why do we have all these players and watch our team get pressured by players who just get told what to do, not because of the um like the techers or they got the, the the skills or whatever. It's just got told what to do. When you get the pass the ball, they do this, do this, but we play. Freestyle football, which is good, but don't work all the time. You don't compare constructive stuff to freestyle. You're you know this. on the game. Based That's on what the I'm game. Mm -hmm. Like this, what I'm saying, like you don't compare them two things. That's what I was doing. We're playing freestyle football, and that's the other team's playing constructive football. And that's why our performance in games are poor. I got upset against um, AC Milan. I was upset with it. And the West Ham match, I was really upset. Like Jack said, it got to time that you felt like you want to split. I didn't split. I was just sat there, mm -hmm. pissed up, based off performance. Like, and I'm still asking you guys, this, this is the second week I'm asking you guys this question. What did James do in that West Ham match? Um, do you know what? I will be honest with you. I can't even tell you what he done in that game, bro. That second week, this is the second week. I'm asking, what is he doing? We basically play with ten men. Every single game, we've been playing. We basically started a game with ten men because he's been ineffective. He's he's not there to me. Where this advantage disabled. You got Diallo. He just showed you a little bit of quality. Other managers, we say, you know what? I got like Jack mentioned. Um, 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 um Greenwood. Before we before you start recording everything, I did mention Greenwood to you. I see for me it was the guy he I felt like should have like he did his thing. But coming back to the way we perform, it's just dreadful. I can see what Jake's like about Maguire. I've seen a little bit of stability in that defense with him and Lendelaw. Even when he played with Bailey in that, I don't know. I've seen that. Like I mentioned before, people think our defense is a little bit solid. I can see that why they say it, but it's just the performance. We don't go forward. Like I mentioned a few weeks ago, we play with seven defenders. Because Fred and, 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 and McTominay, for me, are defenders. So I don't know. <clears throat> Do you have anything to add to that in terms of Manchester United's performance yesterday? Um, I'll just quickly add on to what Amok said about the AC Milan game. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand why Van der Beek didn't, didn't start. I feel like that was, was a great he, Was he not injured? Is he, he injured at the moment? He's still injured. He's still injured. He was not in that team. 
It was I, really, I take that back then. I really <laughs> do take that back. The only reason why I say that is because, yeah. boy, Kessie lost that midfield. We Trust again me. had two defensive midfielders at Old Trafford in a European game. That's like head scratching for me, you know. Now that you've enlightened me and said that Van der Beek was injured, I understand that given Paul Pogba was also injured, we were just out of options. And we had to play two defensive midfielders in that game. Um, I do understand AC Milan are second in the Serie A and they are both competing with Inter and Juve for the title. But for me, that's no excuses. We played poorly in that game. They came to Old Trafford and their young side, literally, they ran more than us. They created more than us. And I think they should have, they should have won that game because Definitely. They, had a co- they had a couple of opportunities. They were close. Kessie with that brilliant goal, handball, and there was another opportunity earlier. They should have won that game, in my opinion. And it's now down to the boys to step up in the second leg. Hopefully Rashford will start in that game and we can win that. It's not going to be easy, but we need to win. But yeah, back to the game against West Ham. Team being unable to score goals, not being able to create, and it's been, it's been a consistent thing for Manchester United, not being able to open up teams, especially on the low block, especially when the team are defensive. With David Moyes, of course, he came to defend. And he didn't come to attack. And I was quite shocked because I thought that West Ham will pull it on us. David Moyes, again, played defensively. It's a bit shocking with West Ham's performance. Um, in terms of the team being unable to score... That's not a surprise to me. Like I tell you, what time and time again? What do we do in training? I don't know. I would like to see. I would pay. I would pay one training session just to see what do Manchester United do in training, so I can be at peace with myself. You know, so I can be at peace. And then I know what to expect on matches, and I will never be upset. I will never react. You know, my match reaction will be the same as always because I already know what they do in training. Tina were able to score a mook. Why is that? I think it's the way we set up. Go on. Like, you've got... I don't know. Like, striking, Marcel ain't been doing bits and he's obviously got injured in the last game. Remember, um, Bandus, um, Cavani got injured as well. And we got Greenwood. He is doing bits. The stability for players to play forward right now for us to score goals or not. We not, <clears> not <throat> I don't think it's there. We'll have that one person. Last season it was different because everyone did score. Everyone chipped in. Defenders, midfielders, strikers, everyone chipped in when you come to goal. But this season it's not like that. And if you got strike, if you got strikers, he are not scoring goals except one individual. Of who's going to find it hard to get goals against teams? We saw that against West Ham. We saw that against AC Milan. That for me, I've just been a setup and the players that only choose to play some position. The defensive sometimes, however, you do first time when it comes to your number 10 and in your striker, but every single position goal is constructive. You got to put, make sure they know what they're doing. Because you're number nine, you, you meet you, you, you're number 10. And your striker, they can do what they want. These are your game makers. They can get goals. But every position needs to be unlocked. But exactly. and that's why we that's why we're not doing the bits. And I can see that every single game that we play, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why you see a lot of players looking clueless with the ball in terms of position. They don't know where to be. But that that again goes all the road leads straight back to the dugout. And that dugout is the is the management. You know, in life, all the road leads back to the dugout, you know. You know, I keep saying this again and again. You can say, oh, no, why do you have to blame the managers? At the end of the day, your team is a reflection of whatever they do on the training pitch. And I know I understand that certain players are not good enough. But as a manager, in any type of business aspect, your job is to get the best of whatever you have. Whoever is the shittest, you make them better. You know, because when you get that job interview and they ask you, how can you make him better? You better stop performing. 
You know, you better start making it better. If if you can't do that like the other managers can do, like within a week or two, we saw no within 24 hours, I saw what's it called? Um Chelsea's manager transform Chelsea's style of play. So if you can do that in 24 hours, and Brendan Rogers can do that in a couple of weeks, yeah, with, with his squad. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Yeah, and who else? Like the Klopp can do that with his own team, yeah. Even though we're talking four years, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, because the club didn't really have money to get the right players. Still, you should be able to do that. And for us, we've seen Manchester United players declining in terms of development, you know. Certain players are improving because of their own self, because it's evolution. But players are declining in terms of development. Mason Greenwood isn't the same player that he was last season. You, people can say, oh, make, um, the good thing about Hoshua is that he brought through Mason Greenwood. Mason Greenwood was talented. He didn't develop him because he's not developing right now. He's not teaching him where to be in terms of on the field, what to do when he doesn't have the ball and the things that he can improve on. Because right now, Mason Greenwood is step over, step over, shoot. No one's educating him. Mark Rashford, I keep saying again, Mark Rashford runs into walls. Like, I have to say one thing about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He can't say he doesn't notice what we notice because he does. He watches the game just like us on an electronic device, you know? Because if we can see it, he can see it because he's watching it just like us on an electronic device, on an iPad, we're watching it on a TV. It's the same thing, even though that the match is right in front of him. He can see it. We see it, bro. But Man United, remember to score? That's what I think. It just all leads back to whatever's on the training pitch. Simple as. Um, you man, the match for you guys. And t- I will start off with you, Jakes, and don't give the match if you have one because I don't have one. Aston Villa game. Uh, West Ham, bro. Ma- mm-hmm. Um, West Ham game. Sorry, I always get them too mixed up. I'd <laughs> give it to Greenwood. You know, I'd give it to Greenwood. I think he had a decent game. He wasn't given too many opportunities. And he did hit the post twice, so I would give it to him. Um, donkey of the match, uh, Daniel James, straight away. Straight up. I know he got injured at half time, or he got injured at some point, but yeah, Daniel James. And what about you, Amok? What about you? All right, I'll go with um, Greenwood. From, um, I think he did well. Like, I think he did really good. Even though he didn't have enough opportunities or, ch- or clear cut chances, but he did bits. And obviously, like, DJ Gobi don't give the match. Like, he has to. Ooh, like, to me, it's the, the first thing. 20, it's, it's the first 30 minutes to 45 minutes. If you can't cut it within the team and you play, you play in a, like an important position, you don't deserve to play in that team. He's playing the important position. So if you can't cut within the first half, like, why are you there? See, I knew exactly what Oli was doing with DJ. He was slowly bringing him back to us. Yeah, so he did say like, it. I, he did I, say not, he did say And like, now he's the regular fixture in the in the squad. <laughs> I'm not surprised. He, he does, the, Oli does that, you know. Someone that you don't like, you slowly bring them in, like, and then you start <laughs> liking him. Like, I think but he Jack, had one, one, one brilliant no. game. Yeah, one said, brilliant Jack game. Jack said, not pulling for this. One brilliant Bro, game. Like, no. Was it what's the game that he shined and then everyone was like uh, happy to see him? Um, I think it was a cup game, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if run. you guys remember, I did mean I did say in the beginning of the season, Oli likes him. If Oli's gonna use him often, he better be on that it's quality. Favorite. It's one of his favorites. It's one of his favorites. Like, I did say, like, so I'm not surprised. But yes, my man in the match. Has to go to Luke Shaw. You know, I'm a big fan of Luke Shaw. I thought he was just, he was just too good yesterday, man. Hey, Luke, so solid. Luke Roberto Carlos out here, fam. He's turned Brazilian <laughs> out here, man. That's what I've been hearing, fam. That's what I've been hearing. But yeah, my don't give match because I don't really have one. I have to go with you guys. DJ, don't know. Daniel James. Yes, that's three strikes out here, you know. <laughs> Moving on to one of the most interesting news I've heard, which made me sick. To my stomach, I was feeling ah when I heard this. Yeah, the rumors I was thinking, no, nah, allow it. Like, no, man, United are not serious. Rumors have it that Ollie's in line to get a new contract, which was worth nine million a year. The, the board it has it that it's all been agreed. It just probably <clears> waiting <throat> to announce at the right time. 
I, for me, I feel like this is the sign of, this is a high level of incompetency because why? You wait until the end of the season. Don't give me this news. Do you think I will be happy? Like, so I know, I know some of the only inside, only in people will be like, yes, uh, yes, yes, only new contract. Yeah, yeah, because they're happy with this nonsense. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not a fool. I, I see the bigger picture. Like, wait until the end of the season if you want to offer anything to Oli because he hasn't mm-hmm. achieved anything, he hasn't won anything. You know, let's see where we finish off in the league. Let's see if we we'll finish off in the league. Let's see right. where we finish off in the Europa League. Let's see where we finish off in the FA Cup and then judge him there. Because that's what good clubs do, top clubs do. They wait until the end of the season and then give the guy a review because he's on his final year. What next season's his final year, you know? We don't learn from our mistakes. You we know? don't we at really all. Don't. I actually thought we because will. In the, when we first came in as take, um, caretaker manager, we did the same thing. We didn't wait until the end of the season. We just gave him a contract and then he started losing when we gave him the contract. We shouldn't rush these things. We need to wait until the end. Has he met his objective for this season, which is top four, I believe? He could get a new contract today and then, God forbid, we could win our next, we could lose our next 10 games and not make the top four. So let's just wait till the end of the season. You know? You know how we feel. I don't feel Oli's the right man for United. Even if he comes second, reaches a final, I still feel like we do need a better manager. But he's ticked the boxes for, for the hierarchy, unfortunately. Chase, for me, even if he won the Premier League, I still feel like we should depart. We should make yeah. our way. So I hear you. Mm. It's a tricky one. <clears throat> it's a tricky one. And what about you, Amok, man? Hearing this news, man, how do you feel? I'm just smiling because... <laughs> It just makes me feel like I was right and I've always been right. When I I'm not surprised they're doing this, though. Like, I said, all we do yeah. is lay mm-hmm. foundations. Mm-hmm. We don't build anything solid on top of them foundations. For a club like United, since we lost Ferguson, in the foundation of Ferguson laid for us, because we didn't lose the, what we've had with Ferguson like Liverpool did, like ages ago. We did it within the modern era. So for us to upgrade ourselves, it's easier with the finance of the club getting, with everything surrounding the club. So they're making the same mistakes. He only going to sign for United right now. What managers out there that the club interested in? Uh, only. <laughs> <laughs> and like you guys just mentioned, they don't learn from the mistake. You done it last season, as soon as you give him a new contract, his performance declined so bad that Getting rid of him was all over the, the, the media. Mm-hmm. But Rashford saved them. So I'm not surprised. No, please. We don't build, we just build foundation, nothing solid, nothing concrete. I just said, I, I might be wrong, but if only get this new contract, he's not even going to last six months, he's going to get sacked. But the thing is, I'm that just saying, they shouldn't, they should, it's worth, whether he deserves it. I don't feel like he deserves it. Don't deserve it. That's what I'm saying. He does not deserve to be our manager in the first place. Not even that. It's not about that. It's about the new contract itself, because it says a lot. Has he won anything for the club? Any title? No. Mourinho and Van Gogh won something. Zero accolades, you know. Accolades. I can't even give him his accolades. On on Oli, Mm -hmm. compared to these two other two managers. So this I'm saying. Are we doing, like you guys said, we don't learn from our mistakes. The other team managers gave us titles. Even if it's not something that we, hey, but we got titles, medals. What's Oli Brown to the table get for him to get a new contract? <clears throat> Nothing. Nothing at all, man. Disappointing. You know, and it didn't surprise me because, of course, guys, moving on to the other news with the new director of football, um, we have John Murtough, John Murtough, being promoted from his previous role as head of development to director of football. And of course, the new technical director, which is Darren Fletcher, a guy that was just, I didn't know, out of the blue. Apparently, he was at Manchester United around December. All of a sudden, he was coaching uh, was on the 23s or the academy team. And all of a sudden, he becomes a coach in our first team. And then all of a sudden, what, what? Maybe the space of six months. Oh, we've been saying the contact director, like, raw. Like, this, this just shows the level of... Inc- 
competency of our club. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. they just got that reflection and be like, yo, Darren, do you, do you want a job? I think you're I think you're good for this role, you know. Like I know you've only been here for six months, but I really think you're a good role. And what pisses me off the most about Manchester United, <clears throat> we waited three years, three years for a director of football. For three and years. Got this. And we got this. Do you know what that makes me feel like? You know, like for example, three years, yeah. We've been begging, you know, beggars can't be choosers, but we've been here for free. Imagine being in a train station for three years, yeah, begging for money. No one gives you nothing until that one day someone gives you and they give you one P, yeah. And that's what Machine did. They gave us one P because they never re- searched, they never, rec- they never looked for anyone at all. And they come up with this garbage, yeah, like here, like we finally got you. Can I ask you a quick question? Go on. No disrespect to Diane Fletcher. Of course, Lord knows I got a lot of him. But has he done anything in the football industry since he left for him to have that connection? Because we talk Thank about you. people. He knows yeah. the other guy that knows the other guy that knows the manager that exactly. knows that. Yeah. I don't know what I mean. I, 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 don't, I, don't I, I, I know of a friend guy. of a friend of a friend of a friend, friend that knows a friend of a friend. A friend of a friend. But yeah, I can get free food. Yeah. No. Even the director of football that we've got. He was someone that got recruited by David Moyes. You see the thing about us, Man United will take they take the piss because they're like, "Oh, you want a director we of football? Really, Here is it. Here, really. Here's one. It's a catch this director of football. So they're all puppets. They're all we puppets. Really. Guess who's behind all of this? Ed. All puppets, man. Jess, how do you feel about this hiring? <laughs> this, but, but there's a structure. There's a structure there. Finally, but look at the structure they gave us. No, nah, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace because, as you say, we've been waiting for this moment for three years. You know, we've been waiting for three years, and with jobs, more time, people get six months probation period. How can Darren Fletcher get three promotions in the space of six in the space months. of six months? Yeah. It's for me. It just shows it's showing the world that we don't really know what we're doing because. We should have just offered Fletcher the job in the first place. Like, why are we tiptoeing around that you're going to manage? How how much could he have learned in six weeks with the under 18s or the under 23s? How much can he have learned in six weeks or was it eight weeks with the first team? It's you know, and this other guy, John, whatever his name is, not to be rude. John, I don't Myrtle. really know who. No, who is he? And is just he like a boy, listen, just like mm-hmm. my boy Amok said, mm-hmm. how. What contacts does he have? He's been the, Is it head of youth development? Yeah. Your, your head youth of youth development, yeah. You know, for me, let's just, at least we, as you say, we've got structure in place. Structure. For me, it's time to well, judge. At least we've got, we got football people in, in charge of football. Exactly. So now, let's just judge with the transfers, because that's the end product. Mm-hmm. If we're gonna if we're gonna get good players in in summertime, players that all of the fans recognise that we need, you know, in the right positions, good quality players, then we can say fair enough, it's okay. But if we get this coupled with again poor performances in the transfer window, then huh, we've just become a joke of the team. So let's just wait and see. Fingers crossed for the summer transfer window. Do you reckon it? Because when as soon as I saw that, I saw that recruitment. I knew Oli was gonna get a new contract because these are all Oli peeps out here, fam. Mm-hmm. You get me? Mm-hmm. They can't go up to Ed and say, you know what? Yeah, I'm a big man thing. Let me be honest with you. You know what? Oli's dead. You know, like he's shit. Like, you know, you should get rid of him. Like honestly, get rid of him. That reflection. Like you know what? I've been telling you for the last time because I've been in a training session and I've scratched my head five hundred times and I've never scratched my head five hundred times in a training session. Questioning, what the hell is this? You know? Ah, yeah, I just hope they have the bravery and the courage to tell Edward Wood behind Ali's back. Yo, he, he needs to sack him. He needs to sack him straight up. But they won't, because why? Ali brought them in. Ali brought down Fletcher in, man. He even gave him the, um, the, the press conference saying, we didn't want to lose Ali, like, I mean, we didn't want to lose Darren Fletcher. We thought he was a good addition to the squad and we thought he'll do well. And, it's, and I'm thinking, shut up, man. Shut, shut up. All of you guys just shut up about just John Merton guys being in the club since 2000. Why do we still have rejects from David Moore? You Moses? know, I sense. What? I sense Paddy Paddy business. It's all of that, man. All of that. That's no friends of friends. Of course you know, like, it is. Of that people is. say, 
that a lot of people of say is when you get the job at the Tesco Tesco manager and you bring all your man them in. You get me? You get me? And that's all. Most a lot of the time, it's not what you know; it's who you know. You know yeah, exactly. That's what it is. But I don't think the people surrounding our circle, like from not the um, not was it called Edward Bud? Because I believe his position, even though he don't know anything about football, with the right people around him, he could do positive things surrounding our football club. But it's the mm. people surrounding him that I questioned. The manager, and we've been questioning this manager's ability to manage this club for the past year and a half. And he's just given us someone that we haven't seen any credentials from yet. Like we said, mm-hmm. we give them a chance, let them do what they got to do, and we should judge them after that. But if we're going to wait three years, like you guys just mentioned, for something like this, at least give us that Bruno moment. Do you know what I mean? Three like, years, give us Jess, that Three years. Did I ever interview anyone? Did internal recruitment, a promotion after three years of Bandy, Bandy. telling us that you want to get a director of football. I'm hurt. I'm a hurt. For me, that means you you, you failed at your job because your task was to get that get someone externally. We needed someone that was world class. We needed someone that had the good contacts within the game. Somebody that has been doing this for a while, you know. So to get someone internally and promote someone internally for me just shows that you failed in your search. And then here this year, apparently the reason why they didn't go for the other people that was external is because they didn't feel that their record, track record of signings were not good enough. And we've just well, had young... that's inter- we just signed internal person that doesn't has never been in the role. What's his track? No, record? but then with his job, I'm sure he might have been involved with the signing of youth, youth players, young yes, prospects. yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I'm that. just trying to think what future youth, what youth players has he brought in that have been like, wow, that's broken into the first team. I can't think of it in the last seven years. Yeah, because we couldn't get through, we couldn't get Chung through, we couldn't get what's called Timothy Fosu Men. So I'm very sure he was there because that's the Moyes era. Like he they must have brought him in. Ahmad. He brought in Ahmad because I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought like Ahmad might be the new one though. Remember I told you from the very start, but it's all about the structure that the team got. We got like structure, we got place. Finally, we got structure. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with, like, we've got something set up. I'm just not happy with the people that's in it. Like, I, I, I get it, but at yeah. the same time, I don't get it. I'm, like, I'm as confused as the moment when Beyonce met Jay-Z and got with him, and I was like, I get it, but... <laughs> Still don't get it though. Like I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You say I get it, but I don't. It get took it. you a decade. Yeah, it took exactly. you a decade to, to get in this. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. The boss it. Yeah. Ten years. Jay Z's rich in that because he's clapped as hell. Yeah, but yeah, I still don't get it though. <laughs> yeah, like why are you with him? <laughs> like it's like that, man. I get it. We got the structure, but I still don't get it because you got the wrong people in charge. Like, but I get it though. I, I can give you credit for that, man. But, yes. but if we was going to wait for three years, give us Bruno moment. You see, when we waited for exactly. Bruno, we got get, Bruno. Get the best. We all got excited. Give us Bruno moment because we've been waiting for this. We've been talking about this since our, since the old my old apartment. And I moved to another apartment. And I've stayed there for almost two years plus. You know what I mean? So give us Bruno moment. But like we all mm-hmm. agreed on, there is a foundation there. Hopefully it can get. That it, wherever that goes around, it can become better, and we can see like benefits from these people that have been appointed. And just be optimistic, like I've always been saying. But if we're gonna sit there and think about what, why they've done this and this and that, just if remember, yeah, we asked you, mm-hmm. what, what about job without CV, good CV, in this in the West? What are you going for without a good CV in the West? Yeah, I think to add on to what Amuka said, the guys need to really look at the history of our transfers. And I'm talking the last seven years. We had a show around Christmas time where we looked at the past, <laughs> the history of our transfers over the last seven years. I think we spent over a billion pounds and the majority of those were flops. So if we don't get the right people in, who can get the right players at the right price, mm-hmm. we're going to continue to waste money. So I do hope that they took this into consideration when employing Fletcher and Johnny Boy. But we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Johnny Boy. 
Yes, that's right, guys. We're moving on straight to the Premier League round up weekend round up of match week 29. Having a couple of games played where our ups did win, you know, no one really had a bad week except for Chelsea drawing against Leeds. We saw Arsenal winning the North London derby. Right now, North London is red, a part of London. But the entire, entire London isn't really red, though. No! Yeah. Yeah, no, it's mostly blue. Yeah, it's because Chelsea be giving it to you guys in London. City winning the 3-0, smashing Fulham to bits, with us winning 1-0 with an own goal from Dawson. Interesting week for the Ops. Man City again, thriving guys, shining as forever, looking like they will win the league, as we've always said before previously. Again, 3 0 against Fulham. Aguero finally getting a goal back. I don't know if you guys watched that match, but City looking again, tough, tough, tough. And week after week, I don't know, man, guys. What what would it take for other ups to actually beat them? Because we're the only one so far that's actually put them off their, their perks, whatever, with luck. But yeah. I think Wolves, Wolves manager, mm-hmm. if we had like the same back in this pep or only them luck, he would do madness in the league. Oh, you mean um, Wolves manager? Yeah, the Portuguese guy. I forgot what's his name. No. I think... He, Santos Espresos. He's the very good manager. manager. Mm-hmm. Like, he's the only manager I can compare to Pep a little bit. Pep is out of this world, though. If you're comparing to Pep, that means you must think that he'll be a good addition to Manchester United. Nah, I want it. Nah, that's what I'm saying. He's Absolutely. a good manager. Nah, if, he's a very, very good manager. Mm-hmm. All he needs is a good backing. If, if, if he's way done from this, this roof thing, even though they're struggling, but this is the Premier League. Yeah, but it's, a t- it's exactly a team that was in the championship, but the Premier League, and he's now making them a stable side. So good, nah. good stuff. He improves his players, you know. Nah. Very Ollie, good. Well, keyword improves <laughs> what he has, you know. You know, he doesn't good have backing. money. He's a very good manager. When I see a manager that doesn't have money, but he gets the best out of his player, and they play a very good system and they play good football. I'm like, there's the talent right there. You know, when you don't, that's that's the hard grind and graft. That's when you see someone that doesn't have money. Can't play with money, but he can make the other players shine with a good system and good training makes them play better. That's a talent right there when you're looking for managers, you know. Simple as, you know. Like when when you first spotted someone like Poch, you know, a guy that, you know, was at a team like what Espanol went to Southampton. Didn't have that much money, but he made them shine. He went to Spurs. Spurs don't have money like that. But he made it improve them, and that's good quality. That's the size that I like to see, you know, as a manager. But yeah, sorry, I got a bit distracted there. Yes, as you were saying, I'm work. I no, it's, it's okay, big man. Like, <laughs> but, like I said, I'm, I could, I could just sit back and smile to all of this because I told you, I said I was worried about City. It's just the football they play. And for me, it's all about the manager. What City does is not, um, I believe people say they got individual players. He's actually good on the ball, yes. But how City play? You have to be a very good manager to put up a team like that and tell them to play like that. I don't care who you got. You might have Messi or Ronaldo put them in the same pitch. They will not play like that. Mm-hmm. You have to have a very good manager like Pep to tell you what to do. Like I said, if I could go back and just compare managers, it's just that Wolf manager, I think he's a very, very good manager. If he was flip managing one of these top clubs, he's busting it. And with Arsenal winning 2 1 again, the North London derby with that dubious penalty. Was it a penalty for you guys, Jex? Let me ask you. Let me go through it to you. Do you think that was a penalty against Lacazette? When I saw it initially, I said, hell no, definitely not. And then they showed the replay. And then again, I said, this is not a penalty, you know. Um, albeit, I feel like Arsenal did deserve to win that game. But boy, oh boy, that was not a penalty. Regardless of whether... Um, who who was the centre-back at the time? Um, oh, Sanchez. Sanchez. Mm-hmm. Regardless of whether Sanchez went into him or not. Like I said, I already missed the ball. Sanchez yeah. would have blocked the shot if, like I said, made connections. So, 
to me, they got way the wrong up, decision. Way off target. VAR, VAR is there for a reason. I don't know who the guy guy is. I don't know what he was looking at at that screen. I think Arsenal were lucky for that penalty, but not for the win because they did deserve to win. And what about you, Amu? Do you think that was a penalty? Definitely not a penalty. <coughs> a penalty. Because after, like I said, before like they took the shot, he was getting closer to him. He took the shot, then to get him together. But like I said, took the shot first. Mm-hmm. And the ball was way off target. Mm-hmm. If it was a clear court penalty, if it was a clear court chance that the ball was meant to go in, that understand. But ball clear now. But that just said that the VR, I love it. I, I'm, I actually did say I want VR because the way the money the, the referees used to ref the games. I've always been angry fans against referees, but haven't seen an improvement yet. Though it's still the same. Weeks it's good, but some weeks it's really really terrible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what VAR is like in other countries because it seems like we're the only country that complain about video assistant referees, bro. I don't know what it's like in other leagues, man. <laughs> Maybe because yeah. I always understand that we're always behind in technology, so we're always going to be the, the worst at actually getting it right. Whereas other ones, everyone else has started ahead of us and they'll be probably at a more advanced stage than where we are. You know, no, I don't, I don't hear think it. Just, there's no it? issue with the technology at all, though. It's, it's the, the people now around, and I feel like some of these officials that are in and around football at the moment, some of them they either weren't good enough in the beginning, or they've lost whatever they had, because the way the modern game is now, the majority of the fans watching and the pundits are seeing one thing, and a lot of the time these guys are seeing something else. So maybe, like we mentioned on the show months and months ago, maybe they need to do some new training qualification. They need to get the same 10 men that are, or the same five men that are looking at the screen <laughs> and they need to train them. Or I don't know what they need to do, but something needs to change. The personnel is not great. The VR itself, I think, is needed. In this day and age, the amount of money that rides on games, you know. Um, but yeah, personnel needs to change. Right, that, well said. Well said. Of course, Chelsea drawing against Leeds. Nobody cares about that. You get me. Game of the week, guys. My favorite part of the show. You know what? I don't know why you're laughing because it's not that t- time right now. You know, <laughs> you, well, can't, you can't throw on it. I, I'm not gonna troll, man. I'm not gonna troll, man. Go my game of the week is not down there, fam. It's not down there. It's not the North <laughs> London derby, bro. My game of the week, of course, guys. Leicester 5, Sheffield United getting sheffed up again. Oh. <laughs> Collect it in your, in your large with the hat trick. Fantastic. First ever. Goal. First ever. In I'm so actual. in your actual because he got mm-hmm. dumped by Man City and ended up at Leicester. And of course, tough times at Leicester because not all the time he was starting, most of the times he was right bench riding. And this game that nah, he done particularly well. I thought Leicester was oh, Leicester or oh, problem. You know they were, they had a spot for brief moment until we actually got it back. But boy, boy, Brendan Rogers, another manager that can again. I'm gonna keep saying this again in this type of tone. Another manager, yeah, that can improve what he has. Like you know, can turn water. I mean, like what is it? Stone into water or is it water into stone? Which, which one is it? Do you remember I told you? you? Use both of them. <laughs> Whichever way, that's how good they are. Do you remember I told you? Mm-hmm. I said, I know he's from the ups, mm-hmm. but you know where you go, go to your ups, you say, you know, let's squash this. <laughs> come to my side. <laughs> like, I'll do that. Do that, 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 that meet Mill and Drake moment when Meet Mill went yeah. to Drake. Yeah. I, I know yeah. Drake didn't go to Meet Mill. Meet Mill went to Drake and said, like, can we squash it? Because he wanted to sell John. Yep. Like, we, we, we don't have that we see and it ha- you missing all this stuff as a football fan and I love my club, yeah? It just upset me to see even the teams he haven't got that much of a history in terms of the Premier League or football in general. Build, building better foundation and structure around this foundation for themselves. And I see Martin doing the opposite and it really upset. Because Leicester will be one of the best teams in Premier League uh, era, 
if they continue doing what they're doing right now. They've got the money, the backing, and they're playing one of the top leagues in the world. They've played all the competitions that football can give to you. So, like you, you said, we need to do something different. This day and age football is different. And Amok, let us know what was your game of the week while you're on the mic. My game of the week, it's like you took it out of my mouth, it's not smart. Like it's Leicester match. <clears throat> like that's why I just smart. That's why I have to emphasize on Leicester. That's the Leicester match. They they too good. They a, they play good football. I like the way they play. Like Jesse Clint in natural did what he did. I got happy for him. You just have, I'm still. Can you look, tell me how did he score the last goal? Was it just the, the, it was was it, the defenders or the keeper? What happened? Because it was that far. How in placement and Aaron Ramsdale or whatever his name is just sorry too late, man. He couldn't get there. Mm-hmm. Poor defending. They should have closed him down. Mm-hmm. But and then he's have to get so. checked up. Mm-hmm. They, they got they, chefed up, man. They got chefed up. No, they deserve it. They got. They deserve it. <laughs> and what about you, Jace? What was your game of the week, bro? Hey, I need to give it to um, Arsenal Tottenham. You know. Oh yeah. Simply for Lamel for Lamella's goal. Lamella's goal. Lamella's goal. That yeah. goal. It's one of the best goals I've seen in the Premier League. That was the technique was incredible, man. Great goal. Um, best meme so far. Pardon? Best meme on the internet. <laughs> I haven't seen any yet, you know. I need to catch up. I've seen a few on, on Instagram this afternoon. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, the game itself wasn't that great, but it was a good game to watch. Um, the way Jose sets up, though, he has Son, Kane and Bell at his disposal. But yeah, him to set up, yeah, it's a, almost a waste of time. So you to set up that deep, you know? Um, but hey, it was a good game. And yeah, that's my game of the week. Jeez, Arsenal, Arsenal. Watch the red. We all watched it, you know, <laughs> Mother's Day special, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's move it straight up to guys, to straight to the ball for the match previews. AC Milan versus Manchester United Thursday. 8 p.m. this time, not a 5 not a 555 team, guys. No rushing from work if you have to go to work, you know. Yes, yeah, so you can even have your dinner as well, guys, in time before the match starts this time. Yes, AC Milan. We did, of course, drew effed up in the last couple of minutes of that last game, conceding an away goal. So, right now, guys, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys, straight honest. I don't think we're going to do anything. I see us going out. We are out. At the moment, we conceded that goal in a way, especially the way we played against Milan. And without their strongest team, Slatan coming back and the other players are, other players are coming back and we'll be starting. You know, like Tonali probably will be starting as well. You get me? Mm-hmm. And Bonaventure, if he's playing, like they're, they're regular stars. I don't see us going through, especially the way Oli will set up a team. I know he's going to play Magdalof. Magdalof is going to get moved to by, you know, the big man mm-hmm. Slatan Ibrahimovic. You know Slatan's going to be like you. Because Maguire's not going to be on it. Because Maguire's going to be like, no, no, I don't take the strong man in the team. You is Eric have... injured? I don't believe he'll play Ma- by. Because he's going to take it serious. Whenever he plays his strongest team, so it's with yeah. Magdalof, isn't it? And this is mm-hmm. a... He's going to see this as an important game now because he has to win it. You know? Mm-hmm. I don't see your team doing well. Jack, I'm afraid straight to you since you were, you're already talking already, like... Well, we're out, man. The way... That first leg gave me no confidence whatsoever. No confidence. Mm-hmm. The way AC Milan took the, hopped on a plane to Manchester and then moved to us at Old Trafford. <laughs> I can't see us doing anything at San Siro. Don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll be hopeful. But the logical side of my brain tells me we're not going to do it. But let's see. You know, with United, we it's either going to be hot or cold. You know, you can see them perform brilliantly against City and score a couple goals. And then we can see them play against West Ham, still get the win, but then not turn up. You never know with United. I'm praying for the win, but I doubt it. And what about you? Um, what do you how do you feel that game will go? What do you think? I still feel the same way. 
it's going to be difficult. I did say from last week, I say it's difficult. And James, I just got to emphasize on what you just mentioned there. That we go just took a whole lot of like if you had any hope of your team making it, based like you mentioned everyone's price, based on the performance, and we scored that goal. Yeah, you got hope. But that performance, and they got away goal plus that you just said they might get so like finally three of the main starters back. Like I didn't want to play them at this time of this period, that is the uh, this in the competition, it's too early to face these type of teams. Mm-hmm. I did say last week, so I really hope we can play the magic. I hope Oli can play the magic. I don't know what he does. Every time he's under fire, he does something. He's not under fire, but Oli need to win something for us. Give us Europa. Exactly. We've been maxed as the main club. The biggest maxed us as the main club to win Europa. So there's a pressure there. It's a fresh strong favorites to win the Europa League. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. On the plus side, at least we've got a very good array record, so you never know. We could turn up there and do something. The we, haven't, we haven't lost away. Exactly. What, this uh, season, for the whole season? Uh, in terms of in Europe this season and also oh, in, in the Europe. League, okay. And also in the Premier League. Oh, wow. Okay, we, cool. Remember, we went, we went to Paris and we beat them. We went to Germany. We beat Red, Red Bull. I think, oh no, we did lose to Istanbul, my bad. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah, yeah, But we've still got a good away record in terms of generally. Better yeah. than our home one. Mm-hmm. True. Of course, guys, Manchester United. We think that Manchester United will not do well. We're not fair work against AC Milan. If they do, whoop de do. You know, we're happy. We're like, all happy. We're like, we moved on to the next round. That one was the win, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we, I, of course. I, I'm not that positive. But, it's the feeling going into that game. Hmm? I can't be optimistic because I've seen the first leg already. Exactly. Moving mm-hmm. straight on to the Leicester versus Manchester United game, FA Cup, 5 p.m. on Sunday. A tough game. Leicester that we've just been talking about just not long ago. It's going to be a tough game. And we're playing away. Which just doesn't really matter anymore. So, like, <laughs> uh, I keep saying that, but it doesn't matter. Tricky game. I feel like we win, you know, because it's the FA Cup. It's a cup game. Um, I'm, I feel like mm-hmm. both managers probably rotate players or something like that or change it up. Un- unless Leicester don't have anyone to play midweek. Oh, yeah, they are out of the Europa League. I forgot. So, they might feel the strong side where we have to probably change our team. But still feel like we can still win against Leicester in the FA Cup and go through to the next round. It, as we said earlier on, Oli has to win something. If he goes out to two cups in one week, that contract, throw it in the bin. I'm going mm-hmm. to move it to, to you. What do you think about that game against Leicester? How are we going to do? Even if it goes through, like I said it before, even if it goes through being He's shooting at the contract. But the Leicester match is going to be tricky. Leicester play good football. And it's, they play this type of football that they don't care how you play. You can play the same way as them. You can defend. They'll open you. They don't have to open the teams. They got some, they just got, what's this name? Is it Tillis, man? For me, you know, you got that. Yeah, you know, man, you yeah. got, he's like the little sauce that makes that food different. That's what I see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he's using them well. So obviously, only this is all about not just Oli, but this is about the team. This generation of team that's playing this era, they need to win something for themselves. They should go out there and put the good behavior. Not just do it for Oli, or this ain't about the manager, this is about the club itself. Because we have won something for the past few years. We need to get something, we need some silverware this year. And Jess, I'm going to pass it straight to you, my brother. Man, how do you think Manchester will fare against Leicester? Um, yeah, I'm just going to come off what Amok said. He has to win the FA Cup. He needs a trophy now. He's been at United, is it two this years is his now? Third coming season. up to three. This comes coming up to three years. Yeah. yeah. He needs a trophy. Um, by hook or by crook, he needs to beat Leicester on Sunday. And we've got AC Milan on Thursday as well. I feel like that game in itself could bear 
have a bearing on Sunday's game. If we go to yeah. San Siro and have a poor performance, uh, that will knock my confidence even more for Sunday. But I do hope we win because we need a trophy. And the FA Cup is still a prestigious trophy to win. So, yeah. fingers crossed. Yeah. So, that's it, guys. Of course, we, we, all hope, we all know that we or hope that we will beat Leicester, you know, and farewell against AC Milan as well, hopefully. I'm hoping that we have a good week. You may may not, Holics, let's just cross our fingers and hope that we have a good week towards Sunday. And of course, we have come straight to the end of the show. It's been another good show. Thank you guys for watching, of course, as always. Do let us know, of course, what you thought of against the match against West Ham and the news for Oli getting his new contract and also the director of football, the technical director. And let mm. us know what your game of the week was and how you think Manchester United will do against AC Milan and also Leicester. I'm going to pass on to the guys just so they can plug themselves in and let you know where you can find them. Um, I'm going to move straight to Jex. Yeah, Jex, <clears throat> where can the people find you, my brother? Find me on Instagram, either down there or down there. It's Jex <laughs> <laughs> underscore United. And Amok, what about you? Where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram, prayflack underscore 16. And of course, guys, you know where you can find me. Always here on Ready Night TV with the match reactions with the, of course, with the weekly podcast. And of course, remember to follow the official Ready Night account of on Instagram, which is Ready Night TV 1. And also the Ready Night TikTok account, which is Ready Night TV Remember to follow me on my personal Instagram account, which is Ivorian on the Sports Advice. Same across the Twitter. And of course, remember, guys, to subscribe, smash that like button. Remember to share because sharing Ivorian Spice is caring. And ladies, as always, remember what I was always said. Remember to share the link with your ex or your current man or your, your friend or your what's called ex friend, whichever one you want to do. And let them know that you found a man that does it way better than you. Even the guy that's chasing you right now and wants to be with you, <laughs> send it to him. The one has been saying, hey, baby, send me your number. Give him the link instead. So they can say, what's this? What's this? A guy that can do it way better than you. That's what it hey, is. Hey, yo, yo, man. You know, I like that one. So, I like that one. I like that. Yo, my God. Send the number. Send the link instead. Send the link instead. Get me. <laughs> As always, remember, guys, as always, remember to keep it united, your soul united, your spirit united, because you'll need everything united this week. That's going to be a tough and a big week for Oli. And, of course, remember to keep it red united. We are out, as always. Peace out. <laughs>